A substitution reaction is one where we switch or substitute the functional group of a molecule for something new or different. For example, here's a generic representation of a substitution reaction where you can see we are substituting functional group X for functional group Y. The X and the Y here are just used to indicate different functional groups. This is clearly not a balanced equation. You'll see that that's something we do pretty often in organic chemistry. Here is a more specific example of a functional group, and this one will be balanced. So here we are starting with 1-bromobutane, and we are reacting it with the hydroxide ion OH-. And in this reaction, we have the alkyl halide functional group. That's what will be substituted. And it will be substituted for the OH, or hydroxide, group. Which causes the removal of the bromide from the 1-bromobutane. So it's just a free-range, free-floating bromide ion. And so again, here is an example of a specific substitution reaction where we are substituting the bromide ion for the hydroxide ion in the reaction. We have names for all of the different components, reactants and products in a substitution reaction. The initial organic molecule that we start with in the reaction is called the electrophile or sometimes called the substrate. Remember, the definition of electrophile is something that loves electrons. That means that it has some aspect of the molecule that is positively charged or partial positively charged. And that aspect of the molecule is coming from the polarity of the carbon-bromine bond, which leaves that carbon atom partially positive. So that's what makes it electrophilic. And then the substance that we are reacting the organic molecule with is called the nucleophile. And remember, our definition of a nucleophile is that it is a lover of a nucleus. And there's a lot of different characteristics for being a nucleophile, one of which is having a full-on negative formal charge. So this reaction really does involve an attraction between a partial positive charge and a full-blown negative charge. And over on the other side of the reaction, we have our product. The product is the organic molecule, the substance that has carbon atoms in it. So this bromide ion is not considered our product because it doesn't have, it's not a hydrocarbon. But the bromide ion does have a name. It is called our leaving group. And that name, the leaving group, also applies to when the bromide is still attached to the hydrocarbon. So over here, we call it the leaving group as well. And it gets its name for obvious reasons because it is the thing that leaves our organic reactant. Leaving groups cannot be just any random thing. We are not able to make anything leave easily off of an organic molecule, in order for a functional group or a single atom, in this case, to qualify as a leaving group or be able to serve as a leaving group, they have to meet two very specific criteria. The first one is that they have to be stable after they leave the molecule. So we're talking about over here as a product, the leaving group has to be a stable or not reactive, non-reactive compound. We need our leaving group to be willing to fall off of the molecule and then just exist as, in this case, a bromide ion without attempting to react further with our product or anything else that might be left over in the reaction. So we needed to come off the molecule and to be happy staying off the molecule, just like this in this case. And that should, that should make sense to you. The second criteria for being a leaving group is that it needs to be something that is able, um, is capable of polarizing 
their bond that they have to their carbon atom when it's in the, the uh, reactant form. So we're talking about over here, in this case, we need it to be able to polarize, oops, polarize this bond so that the carbon atom becomes partially positive. And this is necessary for the reaction to take place. So we need our leaving group to be something that can polarize this bond and make this carbon atom electrophilic so that it is attractive to our nucleophile so that we can get the nucleophile interested in forming a bond with this carbon and creating this particular product. So we want, let's continue this definition, polarize the bond to the carbon in the reactant so that the carbon becomes partially positive and attractive to the nucleophile. So that a reaction can occur. If this carbon atom does not become electrophilic, if it doesn't get partially positive due to the polarity of this bond, then the nucleophile will not be interested in attacking uh, or reacting with that electrophilic carbon and nothing will happen at all. So again, our leaving group needs to be something that can be stable once it falls off the molecule, but also electronegative enough that it creates a partial positive carbon so that a reaction can actually occur.